to traveling around BC back in the mid 90s. And uh, <laughs> um, I was putting together a uh, cafe circuit, which uh, eventually died out as circuits do. Um, if there isn't someone constantly keeping the circuit alive, I, you know, did that job for a few years and, you know, kind of burned out on it. Yeah, it had taken on a life of its own, but, it, you know, it died out. But by the time I was done, uh, we had a few players from, uh, there was a guy from Australia playing the circuit, and there was somebody up from the southern states, you know, and, and, um, and I thought it had taken on a life of its own and that I could, you know, get away from it, but it, it does, didn't work out that way. But I called it the mythical BC coffeehouse circuit. <laughs> The name came from um, years and years and years ago, back to like 70, I don't know, 70, 70, late 70s, 77, 78. I used to go up to Quinnell sometimes. I'd, I'd go up to Quinnell just kind of like with a gold pan, sort of a weekend gold pan. But I used to go into Quinnell. They, they had the old um, uh Hudson's Bay Company trading post. The original log cabin was sitting there. I don't know if that's still there, but but every Friday or night or some there was some night of the week they they would have a, uh, an open mic. So I'd go down and I'd play the open mic, and 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 somebody was always bound to say to me, and I got the same thing when I played uh, like the Chat Noir and the classical joint down in Vancouver, down in Gastown, you know, 75, 76. And people used to say to me, man, you should be on the circuit. And I'd say, well, what circuit? Well, you know, the cafe circuit, the coffee house circuit, you know, the BC coffee house circuit. And I'd say, well, great, you know, point me to it. And nobody ever, nobody, it, there was a circuit, but it, they didn't promote it very well, I guess, or, you know, anyway, the people I was talking to didn't know how to find it. And so I finally concluded, it, to me, the circuit was just, it, became, it was a myth. You know? <laughs> and so... In the mid '90s, I, I I just um I was uh, I was at an open mic at the uh, sub pub up in Nelson, Student Union Building pub, and I did the open mic, played a few songs. Uh, this is '94, uh, you know, somewhere in there, and I asked the people there, you know, well, are there any other like open mics or places where guys? Can... Nobody knew, but they said, well, why don't you just uh, phone around, phone like uh, call Chambers of Commerce and see, you know? So that's what I did. I Went to the library here in Grand Forks. Got a bunch of phone books for um, for, for towns around BC. Got all the fun, started phoning up chambers of commerce. Didn't find, you know I didn't find any cafes that already had folk music going on. But I but I spoke to a few cafe owners. And they were interested in the idea. So so I, I booked myself this little tour of cafes. You know one night stands right. You're not charging money, you're just selling your tapes. There was no CDs at that time, or I didn't have, I had tapes. You know. Mid-90s, there were CDs, but that, no. My, my first CD didn't come until 98, 97, 98. But anyway, uh, so I'm driving up to the first, I've got this, this four-night cafe thing through the south of BC. And I'm driving up to the first, uh, first uh, show, and it's, in, it's at the Chickadee in... Um, Nakasp. I'm driving up there and I got this little piece of paper with these four cafes written on it. It's going Nakasp Trail, I don't know, Kimberly Todd, you know. Consecutive nights of traveling driving long distance driving. And I realized this was this was a circuit. And I thought to myself, Oh there it is. There's that mythical coffee house circuit that I used to hear about. I I'm creating it. And so the name, Mythical B C Coffee House Circuit. So I just had to tell you that. Played one night in Fernie. Actually, I played a bunch of different nights in Fernie over the, over the following few years. And one night there was this fella. Um, his name was Wayne. And um, he gave me a place to stay, which is one of the most wonderful things you can do for a road musician, uh, you know, a, a traveling minstrel who's out there uh, playing past the hat and sell your tape kind of gigs. This fella owned a a bed and breakfast called Wayne's World <laughs> in Fernie. And uh, this fellow Wayne I, and I became friends, but we lost track of each other. I don't know, we just kind of stopped, whatever, I don't know what happened, but maybe he moved away from Fernie or, or I'm, quit the 
the circuit or whatever. But anyway, I'm very happy to 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 say he's moved to Grand Forks and uh, he's he's here in the room tonight. And I just want to say thank you, Wayne, for your help years ago. Yeah, yeah. That's that's the kind of man a circuit like that needs, and um, he's an inspiration. Guys like that. How about a musician? Give him a meal. I'm not, I don't think I'm going to play. I'm only going to do like two songs, three songs here. I don't think you ever heard any of these, man. These are newer songs. Well, I wish I could take all my friends all the way to Louisiana. Current friends and old loose ends all the way to Louisiana. We'll party down mile after mile. Sisters, cousins, too, all the way to Louisiana. Louisiana bound. All of us in my Jeep and all my friends. Louisiana bound. I'll take X, Y. Thank you. 